Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. It's Saturday, so it's an update video day, and there's lots of stuff to update, especially the cam challenge. Um, as a note, just gonna start with a little kind of a sales pitch, but it, you'll see why in a second. You can donate to the cam challenge. There's a link in the description of this video. Anybody who has already donated using that link, so going to my online store and you've donated using my online store, whether it be $20 or $40 or more, any person that's donated using my online store, I'm going to send you the cam cards for the challenge before the challenge begins. You're also gonna get live updates. So as the engines are running, you get a picture of the dyno sheet from each one that's being tested with the different camshafts. That's for anybody that's donated on the link that's in the description, either now coming in the future or in the past for the cam challenge. So if you've already donated, you're one of them, even if it was 40 or 20. Initially I said I'd do 40, but guess what? You guys have donated so much money um, that I'm just gonna do it for all of you. You're all gonna get that. So go donate. The least amount you could donate is 20, but go donate and you're gonna get that. It's a huge benefit. And here's what happens with the money. Initially what had happened was, I had set aside money. I was going to spend two days on the pay for two days on the dyno out of my own pocket. And then if viewers or anybody else happened to donate more money, we would get two additional days. Well, last week we had one more day someone had paid for or people had paid for. Now we have two. And I said, I can't go beyond that because that's going to end up being a whole week worth of work where I'm not getting paid because I'm a one man shop. So I'm not out here grinding on cylinder heads, doing that stuff. I won't get any money and I still have bills to pay. Uh, so it'd be for a week. Well, people to donate it, so we have that four full days. And that's why when I tell you how many camshafts are entered, you understand. Beyond that, so it's about, a, it's a thousand dollars a day. That's what it costs for the dyno stuff. Beyond that, what I decided to do is for, this is what happens with your donations. Beyond going the $4,000, which has happened, um, that's all four days with dyno paid, which by the way, is the first time ever in any of the videos you've ever watched where I've even broke even on the cost of the dyno session. So typically from shirt sales, which this is my son's shirt that I'm selling, but even the other stuff, like the books and stuff, I have yet to break even. The closest I've got was like 90% and that was the very first dyno session with a small block Chevy. This one's the first one where I'm actually breaking even. So thank you for all the donations and whatnot. After that, it goes 50-50. So now that we're beyond 4,000, the money goes 50-50. 50% will go to me, kind of help for paying for me being off work. The other 50% goes to the winnings for the guy who wins. And let me explain. So everybody put in $100 towards the uh, cam challenge that's been entered, which we'll get to that in just a minute as well. However, I said, I'm gonna keep 200, uh, 80, uh, 80 percent goes to the winner, I keep 20%. So if there's 1,000 that was entered, I keep 200. As it is right now, um, as, as the viewing on this, this could change, as the viewing on this, the winner is gonna take home $2,340. So $2,340 the winner is gonna claim for that camshaft challenge. That's a good chunk of change. And let me explain. I know you're like, wow. There's a throwdown in T-Town that's here in Tulsa, because I'm in Broken Arrow, it's a suburb of Tulsa. It's a major race. There's a 6 index class I entered almost uh, I try to enter it as often as I can. To win that, you can win fifteen hundred bucks. The next class up, I think their their winnings was like twenty five hundred dollars to pay two fifty. By the way, just to enter, the cars cost around fifty to sixty thousand dollars, some more, to win at the most twenty five hundred dollars. These guys, or most of these camshafts, I could tell you, do not cost even close to a thousand. Uh, they're making money on this, it's like the first time ever you could actually win real money. Of course, you gotta be the winner. Uh, but yeah, that's what's going on with that. So donate, please, because half does go to me. It helps cover my costs not being in the shop. But the other half goes to the winner. So that it's very much appreciated. And for all, and you do get some real benefits. So it's not just, I got a shirt that I'm only gonna wear certain times or whatnot. You're actually getting information because quite frankly, the competition's great and all, but for the majority of you watching this, you really want to know the information. You want to know what the cams are and how they did. That's that's it. I mean, great to see which cam wins, but really that's what you want to know. And uh, that's the benefit for donating. So link in the description. Now for more of the update on that. 
So last week when I had done the video, I said, you know, someone had paid for the third dino day, which would be a total of 14 cans. Shortly thereafter, we got to four days. And you might, well, five days are in a week. The first day of that week, I have to set up the engine. What I mean by that is I'm gonna take off the heads that are currently on it, to put on the heads that are used for the competition. But I'm also gonna check piston and valve on the worst camshafts, at least what I think to be the worst ones. I'm also gonna, as I've told before on the other one, I'm gonna get the push rods. Um, I told everybody we're running the same push rod, but some that donated push rods, uh, a couple different sizes. I'm gonna ask them what, call each competitor to see what they wanna run. They can still run that 8.150 that I have. And before any of you out there complain about that, if you're not entered, if you're not in this competition, you're a spectator. And spectators don't get to comment on rules. Um, if you do, I just delete the comments. But anyway, so I'm gonna contact all of them, but pretty much what I'm trying to get at is, Monday is the setup day. Also, the Texas Speed Camshaft, the Sage 2, will go in it. And we're gonna run the engine, make sure everything's okay. It'll make its baseline pulls, and that will be our, our start. I'm gonna go through the timing to make sure I've got best peak timing that the engine can make. Um, and that's where I'll lock it out. And what I mean by best peak, it's actually I'm looking for the best average. So for instance, on all the heads tested so far, it's been between 29 and 30. So what I mean by that is if you do straight timing on 30 degrees, um, it will usually make a bit more peak power, but it's actually down through the entire range. So 29 seems to be better. And I'm talking like peak power of only one or two horsepower. So whatever it is, it's gonna be 29 or 30 probably. Whatever one that timing makes the best over that range, that's what's going in. And then that's what the, uh, everybody will have from that point forward. Anyway, after that's done, hopefully we could take out that can Texas Speed camshaft. That one's not part of the contest. That's just to get a baseline on the engine. So when it's over, we could put that back in to see if the engine varied that much. Um, then we'll put in the, the first camshaft. I'm gonna, the way the camshafts go in, they're gonna be a random drawing. So there are 23 current ones that are in, which I'll get to in a minute but I'm gonna number them. I'm gonna go next door to get that little girl and record it, and I'm gonna have her reach in and grab out numbers, and that's how it goes. So the first camshaft that was here may not be the first one that goes. It's really random, and that's how it goes. So for then for the next um, four days, dyno testing, and hopefully we can get it done before Saturday. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to beg Gary to work on Saturday just so we can get the rest of the camshafts tested. If not, it'll be, have to be the following Monday. I hope to not have that happen but anything can go wrong. So here's, that kind of gives you an idea why it's five days. People paid for the extra day, other, a ton of cams came in this week. So when I left last week, and I, several people would email me, I had eight spots. I have zero. So if you haven't entered yet, you're SOL. You're out of luck. Unless someone wants to pay like an absorbent amount of money for me to dyno on Monday because one, Gary still has engines he needs to get built for customers as well. And also I have head porting I need to get done. So it'd be super, 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 super high to test another day, like five grand per day. And that sounds ridiculous because, well, Gary needs to get back to building engines. I need to get back to grinding heads. And it's a lot of work, a lot of work. So this is it. Unless someone just has a lot of money that wants to donate for their day. These are the only competitors that you can have in there. So I'm gonna read off the competitors and I'll talk about some because there's two that I have an asterisk with and I'm gonna explain why. So currently these are the ones that are in and actually these are the ones in. Summit Racing, Lycans Motorsports, um, Carson Kafer, but he think he said to call him Beetle. I'm sorry if I did that wrong, Carson. Um, Brian Taylor, Daniel Powell, two from Daniel Powell, by the way. Um, Cam Motion, Brian Salter, Brandon Gumar, Chris Straub, his did show up. He's in. Uh, John Elford, Tim Hilliard, Optimum Performance, John Batone, Jacob Gibson. There's an Anonymous 1 and an Anonymous 2, which I'll get to that in a minute. Quinton Performance, uh, BNF Engines, and Joe Carroll. And there's also two others. And these are the asterisks, and I'll get back to the Anonymous ones because you're probably asking yourself, who are these Anonymous ones? I'll get to that in a minute. The two that I have an asterisk for are these people. Um, Watney Performance and David Visor. And I'm gonna explain those right now. Watney's Performance had hit me up and had already paid for the cam entry fee. And he said, well, how many spots are available? And I said, well, if you get the cam here, and at that point when he was talking to me, I think it had six spots. If you get to the cam here, um, you're entered. Because I'd said it's first come, first serve. 
but he had a, a bit of bad luck. And what I mean by this is he actually had the cam shipped. So he has sent me tracking number for it shipped. I don't really watch the news and I wasn't even aware of this, but evidently there was a hurricane down in the Louisiana area. So his cam didn't get shipped like it, it, it was in shipping. It had a tracking number, but it wasn't moving. So in his case, it should have been here, I think Thursday, which he would have clearly been in. He would have been before the 20 spots, would have been in for sure. Um, didn't happen because of the hurricane. So it didn't seem fair not to allow him because he'd already paid his entry fee, but the cam had to be here. I've said money and cam, but it seemed absurd to not allow him to be in the competition because a hurricane prevented his camshaft from moving from the um, location where it's being shipped. So Watney is in. Their camshaft is not here, which you're like, that's not fair. It's fair. His should have been, he can't control the shipping company. And then the last one being David Visard. Now, David Visard has not paid the entry fee, which I know I'm going to get to in a minute, and also does not have a camshaft here. The person that's grinding his cams hit me up, I think, Wednesday and said he's grinding it now and it should be to my place on Friday. Guess what? Hurricane thing kind of messed up that shipping too, so the cam wasn't here. Now, if you don't agree with this and you're a spectator, don't care what you say. Uh, if you're one of the competitors, I'll listen to your opinion, but let's face it. Every, I've talked to a few competitors already like, he should be in, it seems reasonable. So David needs to pay his entry fee and it's in. And it's kind of my show, I, I, everybody wants to see him compete, that's why. I don't think any of the competitors will be like, I'm not competing because you let him in and it, didn't, and it violated the rules. Uh, look, hurricanes affected two of the customers. It's not fair for that. The other thing that happened also on really Friday, which would be yesterday, was this. I was sitting at 19 spots on Friday. 19, which means 20 was my max. So hear me out on this. 20 was my max. On Friday, FedEx arrives and delivers a cam. They delivered it at like a... 11 o'clock in the morning. UPS delivers the next camshaft at um, 2, 2.30. Now you tell me how that would be fair not to allow both of those in. Because I said first come, first serve. So the first one really should have been the guy who got delivered by FedEx in the mornings. But how is that fair? They don't know when it leaves, which company is uh, gonna show up before the other one. You could have paid Red Label, which means morning Red, red Label morning service, and you don't know which camp, which shipping company will get there sooner. That's beyond your control. And that's not fair. That's the reason why both of those got in. So I did say first come, first serve, but that's not, it's nothing that any of them could control. So they're both in. That's why we now have 23 competitors, not 20. The two that I haven't, I don't have camps for, but probably will relatively soon. So most likely today. Anyway, that's the scoop for it. Now I'm going to go back to anonymous. So I said anonymous one and two. They're in there by the same company. Now that company said, I don't want my name out just because I don't want to have so much, um, I guess you call it, the new kids would call it smoke, but they don't want to deal with as much stuff going with that until it gets close to competition. They're not keeping their name out of it. They want it to be revealed when we get close to the competition, which I have not a date. I have a date now. So they're not being like, if I suck, I'm not going to say who I am. This company will say they're just waiting because they don't want to deal with the phone calls, which I should point out is 100% correct because this week I've gotten more phone calls, by far more emails about this cam challenge than I have my own business stuff. And it's hard to get to my own business stuff listening to things about the cam shaft challenge. So I understand that. That's why they were choosing to remain anonymous so they can operate their business without being interrupted. Perfectly fine. Their names will be released and you'll get to see that as well. It wouldn't matter anyway. Once you see the cam card, you'll be like, oh, got it. So there is that. Um, hopefully that answers it. Now, just for fun, I'm going to tell you some of this stuff. Just a rough idea. Who has ground these cams? Because we've got a whole bunch of different names, but who's actually ground these cams? Comp has many of them, which this one's fun. You're going to like this. A little hint here. None of the camshafts. So I have 21 that are actually here. Remember, two aren't. None of those camshafts are identical. Not one single camshaft matches the other one. But there is one pair, so there's two people, who have the exact same company ground their cam. They have the exact same duration on intake, exact same on exhaust, exact same lift, 
but different lobe profiles and different lobe separations. <laughs> Interesting. None of the rest are that way, by the way. But anyway, comps ground them. Summit has two that are entered. Texas Speed actually has one. That was entered by a customer, not directly by Texas Speed. Powell has three that are ground here. And it's not by him entering three. Three camshafts have been ground by Powell. Cam Motion has many, like probably four or five. Um, Crower has one. Chris Straub has one. BTR has one. Melling has one. Callie's has one. Yes, Callie's the crankshaft. They also ground the camshafts. Uh, so there's several that are in here that are different grinds. Now, if you notice, you're like, well, that leaves off several. For instance, I don't have one single Howard's cam. Now, I did reach out to them last week, like, hey, where's the cam? Because they were the first one to say, we got balls, we'll enter. And he said they're waiting on a customer or something. Don't know what happened with it, but I heard they're down to one cam grinder, so maybe they just simply didn't have time to get it done, whatever. So unfortunately, no Howard's. Um, don't fault them at all for that. No Howard's. There's not one single cam here from Bullet. That, that actually did shock me. I would have thought someone would have entered at least one Bullet cam, because really, I think they're the second largest cam grinder. Not one Isky cam either, which is also a little bit of a shocker because they seem really popular on the um, internet. No Isky cams. Um, those two are very shocking. Also, when I first did this video, I talked about Mike Jones. There's no camshaft for Mike Jones. Um, I would have thought he would have had at least one of the camshafts would have been ground by him, but there are none. So there's kind of your rundown. It's looking like a good deal. Here's when it's going to happen. I talked to Gary earlier this week. I said, you got a week that's free. And, the, and I had to work around my son's schedule because I'm not missing his swimming stuff. Also, homecoming's coming up. He's going to be in the parade and stuff. Because he's like, I think he's a homecoming king, or I think, for swimming. But because he's the team captain or whatnot. But anyway, the camshaft competition will be from October 21st to that Friday, which I think is the 24th, 25th, maybe even into Saturday. That's when it's going on. So technically it will start on the Tuesday, which would be the 22nd. Maybe the 21st, if we had time just to get one out of the way so we can kind of get some of this done, that's when it's happening. So we're a little over a month out. Here's something else. I've gone through all the rules for those that don't have remembered or just watching this for the first time. The way you win is this. There are four score categories. Peak horsepower. So whoever has the highest peak horsepower to be ranking them. 1 through 23. If you have the best peak horsepower, that's one of your scores. The best peak torque, that's your other score. Average horsepower from 4,000 to 7,000 is your other score. Average torque from 4,000 to 7,000 is the other score. If you notice, by the way, those two should really be the same people. But I wanted to give more emphasis on average than peaks. So, we look at it, this is the reason why you can't score it as we're going through. We really have to wait till everybody gets done. After it's all done, I'm gonna see who, who placed the highest peak horsepower. That person will get a, be like ranked one. Then who had the highest peak torque, ranked same thing. And average torque, average horsepower. Once those are ranked, whoever has the lowest number, which would be technically the highest rank, they win. That's how the scoring goes. So, there won't be a winner. I won't declare a winner until after because this is part of the rules. I'm going to take probably the top three camshafts to the cam doctor guy here in town, have him cam doctor the first cam. The only thing they have to pass is the lift. You cannot go beyond 660 lift. I should also point out, um, there were some comments like, well, you should go over. You know what? Of all the cams entered, no one's even close to 660. I think the closest one's 652. So no one's bumping that limit, at least by their cam cards. So the only thing I'm checking on that is to see, did they hit, were they less than 660? Chances are everyone's gonna be legal. The only other part of that cam doctor that's seen is, is it matched the cam card? Because I will reveal those specs so they can't be giving you a fake cam card uh, or, and then the actual there can be different. So whatever that is, it's gonna confirm what's on the cam card, whatever those numbers are on the cam card, that's what I'm gonna show you. It doesn't make them illegal, by the way, if they have a different from what's on the cam card. Only thing that makes me legal is if they have less than 660 lift. But what I will do is reveal to you guys what the actual specs were. So that's for that. And then I'm going to uh, call them up, say congratulations, you won, and we'll deal with that. All these people then have to get their camshafts back, so I gotta work with them to get their cams back because I'm not keeping any. And uh, that's, that's essentially it. 
So if you're one of the ones that donated, you will be able to, if you keep tally, you have to be pretty good at it. You could probably figure out who's gonna win um, by the end of whenever we get on testing. For the rest of you that don't donate, it's going to be videos. But think of it like this, there are 23 camps. If I spent just one minute talking about each camp, that video would be 23 minutes long. That's impossible, okay? So chances are it's gonna to have to be broke up over many videos and it won't be out for a while because it takes time to make videos. So if you don't donate, you're gonna probably have to wait longer to get the results. I'm sure someone might share it on Facebook, but you're like, you don't know if it's really true because you know, he will make up stuff. Um, anyway, that's how it goes. There's some other rules that I had to go with it that goes with this. Um, this one's kind of interesting. One, a couple of people have actually asked me this question. So these are actually competitors that have asked this question. The, what makes a good engine builder and a good competitive person that does any engine stuff is, is finding ways around the rules. This is what I mean. Uh, and this, by the way, would be legal. So I said your cam had to be here and you had to pay your dues. And that's how you got injured. At least two people have said, can I switch out the cam later? And my answer was, that's not against the rules. I didn't say you couldn't switch your cam. So the reason why, another reason why I'm not sharing the cam specs now is because technically their cam is here. They paid the dues. I didn't say you couldn't switch out your camshaft to something different if you wanted to do that, but you only get one inner because your cam's here, whatever cam that whole position holds, that's your spot. But I didn't say you couldn't switch it. So that's how you get around rules. It's not I me mean, changing the rules, it's them finding loopholes. And two people did. So I don't know if they're gonna take advantage of that, but they sure can. They can switch out their camshaft to something else if they want. But at least two people have asked that. And I've said, you know what? I didn't say you couldn't switch cams. So there. If I was doing this again, the next time if I, hopefully this goes successful and everything goes smooth, so maybe we'll have another one with a different engine family next time probably. But if this goes smooth, I think next time I'm gonna clarify, whatever cam you sent in, that's the one you have to run. But I didn't say that, so it's still legal. Anyway, something to keep in mind for all those. Let's see if there's anything else on that. Oh, several people have asked to help. The biggest thing is, I, and I need to talk to Bill from Old Man's Garage, because I don't know how to do a live feed. I wish I did, because I am gonna get as many cameras as I can so people don't think I'm cheating. And I should put on the only people that think I'm cheating someone is the ones that are spectators and never the ones that are competitors. Competitors kind of have never griped so far about any of this stuff. Um, but I am gonna set up my GoPro on the engine itself, one on the dyno screen itself, so people don't think you're altering it to make someone look better than the other and go from there. The live feed I would like to do, but also, if you guys know, I record on my phone, so it's gonna be really hard to do a live feed when I'm trying to send pictures of the cams to, or the um, dyno results to the people that donated at the same time. So I don't know how that's gonna work. Um, kind of would like to though, but regardless, all those camera angles that I'm taking that's recording as much as possible, what I'm probably gonna do is I'm just gonna upload it to YouTube. So you'd have like an eight hour video, which would be boring to watch because it's a lot of installing and changing camshaft and then maybe 27 seconds of the dyno runs, which would be boring, but then people could and say, you cheated, you gave an unfair advantage. Um, but then I don't really care what the spectators say. Um, yeah, so that wraps up that. That's your camshaft challenge. If you got other stuff, put it in the comments. Maybe I'm sure I left off something. Next week, there'll be another update. Just to give you an idea, hopefully by that point, Advisor's cam will be here and Watney's as well. And yeah, and then I can also, next week, I'll give you an update and see how much more the winnings might've come up so you can get an idea. Uh, yeah, donate for sure. It helps out the winners for sure. It's a pretty good chunk of change you can make. I mean, it's not bad. It's not 10 grand, but it might get there. Um, so yeah, there's that. And uh, anyway, uh, let's get to other stuff. So if you remember last week, I said my son, when I failed him to teach him how to check the oil, uh, and he was, he tore up the engine on his car. At least I kind of thought that way. Well, we went used car shopping last weekend and I told him, I was trying to tell him the best, like, man, I'm telling you, son, it sucks. It sucks big time. They're not gonna leave you alone. It sucks. Well, the night before, so on Friday, we had looked at this Camaro, and you're like, why are you giving your son a Camaro? Well, it's a nice looking car, and it had a V6, and I like, 
the plan was for him, he's 17, he's a senior. The plan was when he got out of uh, high school this year, I was gonna get him a nicer car to drive to college. Clearly it's 09 Malibu, which I'll show you in a second. It's, it's, it was just the one we had. So we bought it brand new and we, my wife and I drove it for years. It's, it's had a good, long, long life. But I wanted to get him something better because I knew for no matter what, he's traveling out of state because he's not gonna go to college in this state because he's wanting to swim. So I wanted to get him something nice. And they all seem nice. Well, we did some searching and by chance, we found this 2011 Camaro with the V6 and dig this, 64,000 miles. Now that to me shocked me because one, that's less miles than my wife's Nissan Rogue has and I just got that for her in 21. So wow, um, one owner and it looks great. This was in a dealership in Collinsville, Oklahoma. It's Collinsville Auto Sales. And I'm telling them like, son, you don't understand. They're gonna be such dicks to us. They will not leave us alone. You're gonna see. I was completely wrong. That dealership must be the first used car dealership I've ever been to where it's not even that way. So let me explain. We go there, I'm like, hey, you wanna look at the car? Like, you wanna drive it? Yes, and I thought, well, this guy's gonna go with us and he's gonna be yuck, 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 yuck. Nope, I had to sign a form saying I have insurance to cover the car. And he says, go drive it. So I go to leave and it's like kind of jerky on the steering. Like it's stiff. And I was like, maybe it's just the tires have been sitting too long. But it's only when you went to pull out of the, of the parking. Um, so then I drove it around. Then I got on the highway and the, per the steering was perfect. The engine was perfect. I mean, everything was absolutely perfect. It was great. It was just at very slow speeds. It would just, you could just feel it. So I came back and I was like, man, um, yeah, I have to say that I think there's something wrong with the steering. I think it's something that you, you could feel it. So he gets in there and he goes, and he feels, he goes, yeah, it is. Uh, I go, man, what's the price on this? And because he had it listed at 12 nine, he goes, the lo lowest I could do is 12 five. And yes, that's above blue book, but I hate blue book for this fact. <sighs> Good luck finding a car, 12,500 for 2011 Camaro V6 with 64,000 miles. I don't know, their calculation thing is off. Because trust me, I found a bunch of Camaros, even newer ones like 14s and 16s with V6s, 144,000 miles going for the same price. So I was like, this is, no. I would rather have less miles. Anyway, he goes, I can do 12.5. But he goes, I'll tell you what, I'll take it to my mechanic on Monday and have him check out, maybe just low on power steering fluid and we'll get it all changed. He called me Monday evening and he's like, it's not the power steering pump uh, fluid. It's the rack and pinion. My guy says he could change it and he'll have it done tomorrow. That used car dealer, which I've never heard of, literally paid to have a brand new rack and pinion installed. So we got the financing, which by the way, you can't get a loan for that because it's above its blue book. So you have to come up with money. You get just for those who didn't know. I've never bought a used car that I didn't pay straight cash for. I had to get a loan for this one. But anyway, Went and picked it up. He gave me even the mechanic's receipt from the place that said, cause they have a warranty. And I was like, oh my God, never happens. And uh, yeah, we picked it up and I'm gonna show you in a second what the car is. It's, it's not bad. It's a nice driving car. I did get a new battery for it. That comes with the territory with a used car. Um, it's not that it's bad. It's just, I wanna have a better one before winter just to be safe. And yeah, it's a pretty nice. It's pretty nice. So it's definitely an upgrade for him. I know several of you said you should get him a Honda or, or a Toyota Corolla. I'm gonna go ahead and stop you right there before you put that comment. Good luck. One, they're actually more expensive. Why? Because everybody and their dog wants their Honda or Toyota, Camry, Corolla, that sort of thing. Swear to God, because everybody thinks the same thing. Oh, they're so reliable, they're gonna last forever. Man, they're like 15 grand for good ones. You're like, no, you could find ones for five to seven. Yeah, worn to bits. And you're like, no, there's nothing wrong. I got 200,000 miles, go 500,000. I don't wanna take that risk. Um, so yeah, I just, and besides, I actually asked a couple of the mechanics around here about the two, about the Camaros with the V6s, do you have any problems? He goes, no, the majority said it was just more of electrical stuff. It's nothing major. The engine stuff, they last fine as long as you keep good maintenance on them. So I've worked on that with my son about checking things. So anyway, yeah, he's got a, got a Camaro. He's gonna, he'll be driving it soon. I haven't let him yet because we're still waiting for some of the, the pipe patch really to come in. If you're not familiar with Oklahoma, if you want to get on anywhere and go anywhere in Oklahoma, they have highways, but a lot of them are toll roads. So you have to have the pike pass, otherwise you get plate pay and they make you charge you like four times as much to go through the toll roads. You pretty much can't go through anywhere in Tulsa without going through a toll road. It's very, very tough and it would take you longer if you didn't, like way, way longer. 
Uh, Oklahoma sucks. It's the best way I can put you for the highway stuff. Anyway, so yeah, let's take a peek at the car and, and I'll say see you guys later. Hope you enjoyed the updates. And uh, yeah. So this is his old car. This is the 2009 Chevy Malibu. It's probably going to go to auction. I don't feel like dealing with Facebook Marketplace. I got a person to put it for auction for me. 174,000 miles. I had the four cylinder. You know what's funny is I drove it this week and I don't really think there's metal in the oil because I pulled off the filter because for those that don't know on these four cylinders there's a little deal where you can unscrew the top and you can pull out the filter. It didn't have any metal. It looked more like plastic stuff. I really do think if I changed the timing chain it would have been fine. But you're like, why didn't you do that instead of buying a new car? One, that was $2,500. He did damage the wheel bearing on this one, which is not really him, but I'm sure he didn't help it. But um, that wheel bearing is needs changed, and they were going to charge $500. He's like, yes, you could do it yourself. I don't have time. Also, he's curb checked so many things with this car, though. I mean, you can kind of tell by the tire. That was a brand new tire. You see that? That's more him. I mean, he's hard on the curbs at first. I mean, he's been driving more now, but, man, he's really... This back one took a beating too. See what I mean? Yeah. Um, anyway, that's when he, probably the first few months he drove. So it wasn't so bad about, I'm not saying he's still doing it, but at first he was just a learning experience. Like he actually bent the rim there. <laughs> See what I mean? So uh, yeah, better to learn on that car than another one. Uh, I'd feel bad if the Camaro had done that. Yeah, it not look great at all. But anyway, he's, he hasn't done that in a while because I've been tracking. Every time he comes home, I look at the wheels. But this is the new one. It's a nice looking car. 2011 Camaro. V6. 64,000 miles. I don't like the rims, neither did he, but he's like, it'll do for now. These tires aren't all the same. Whenever you get a used car, that happens, which I do plan to get him new tires in the um, spring. I'm probably going to change the brakes too because I think those are original. I know they are. So they probably need changed anyway. But yeah. It's a nice car. No spoiler or nothing. And no, it's not super fast. It's just a V6. But I mean, obviously, it's faster than this turd. But yeah. Not too bad. Yep. I'd say I'd get him, a, get him girls, but he already has a girl. So I guess I'll keep him, keep the girl. Anyway. Remember, I don't forecast iron heads. I'm no Superman. You guys take care.